Good morning, Year 4. Today we are going to look at completing our first draft of our persuasive letter. So, we are going to be focusing on using adverbs today to try and link our paragraphs and our ideas together. So as our anchor test then, what do we already know about adverbs? Pause the video and have a think about what you already know. Okay then, moving on then, we're going to specifically look at fronted adverbials today. So what can a fronted adverbial tell us? Where does it fit in a sentence and what examples can we think of? Okay, so a fronted adverbial can still give us time, manner or place, just the way like a normal adverb could. And it fits in a sentence at the front, so at the beginning of a sentence. And I'm sure you've thought of lots of brilliant examples for us to mark and have a look at on Class Dojo. So your anchor test then, can you spot the fronted adverbials in this paragraph? So pause the video, get out your highlighter or underline with a pencil, all of the fronted adverbials you can find. Okay then, so we've got through the bushes, key and searched and searched, under all of the rocks, feeling depressed, confused, like a jack in the box, as key and hurriedly ran back and inside his hands. And remembering that after each fronted adverbial, we should be including a comma. So hopefully you have placed in the commas after each fronted adverbial. So I have provided a prompt map here to help you with some adverbials you might need to use today. So how can we use them in our writing? So I've done a modelled sentence. Undoubtedly, all living things have feelings. So our guided question we could use a fronted adverbial, furthermore, we could say, furthermore, facts state that 75% of runt pigs are euthanized. And then I would like you to do an independent question, it's sentence, sorry, using one of our fronted adverbials from our prompt mat of a sentence you could use in your next two paragraphs. Okay then, so we are going to be continuing with our persuasive letter. I want you to continue using point, evidence, explain, but now I want you to use adverbs as well. I have left the sentence starters in to help you if you need them. I've also left the facts and opinions on the slides to help you with your evidence sections. So pause the video and you are going to do your other paragraph, which is your next point in your argument. So continue your letter to do every paragraph except the conclusion. Okay then, year four. So finally then, we need to write our conclusion. So I've picked out Miss Gaskell's um, conclusion from her waggle that we used last week. And it says, to conclude, I consider it my responsibility to do what is best for the children, even if they may disagree, and reduce the amount of break time. In my experience, the more learning time the children have, the better progress they will make. Consequently, they will perform better in their assessments, have fewer friendship problems, and be well prepared for the challenges of secondary school. Yours sincerely, Miss Gaskell. So, what do we need to include in the conclusion to our letter? So, we need to use adverbials. Okay, we need to give a summary of our main points, so each point from each paragraph. And we could do this by using commas for lists. And then we finally need to state what we believe one final time. And then we need to sign off our letter. So there are the main four things that need to feature in our conclusion. So now it's your turn. I want you to write the final paragraph, so your conclusion. 
So I've given you some sentence starters to help you, but if you can think of your own, that would be amazing. So today, finishing off your letter for me and sending it through on Class Dojo to either myself or Mrs Willis, we can't wait to read what you have written.